Well, let me let me start today's today's webinar. So I'll be sharing my screen with you with you all. So let me start by by introducing myself. In the in the meantime, uh, Clara, Cari, let me know if we can if we can all see my affordable presentation, lean strategy. But let me introduce myself. Uh, as I was as I was as I was mentioning, my name is Jorge Garcia. I've been working at Lean Six Sigma Institute for the last 13 years. I started my professional path, getting engaged and getting passionate about the Lean Six Sigma philosophies just after graduating from, from university. This is back in 2009. I was already working at the Lean Six Sigma Institute. So I've been lucky and I've been fortunate to, to, be, to be working as a consultant, as a Lean Six Sigma coach. For the for the past 13 years, this is this is what I've been doing and what I've been dedicating my professional career to. So, I've been having the opportunity to apply lean uh, strategies, lean tools, lean philosophies into different industries uh, towards five five uh, countries in the in the world, working in hospitality, uh, hospitals, government service, and manufacturing. And on today's webinar. I'm going to have the pleasure to talk to you about, about, the, about the Lean strategy. From our perspective, from Lean Six Sigma Institute, um, we've been working, helping individuals to get certified into the Lean Six Sigma philosophies, into the different levels, yellow, green, and black belt. And we've been also guiding different companies on, on different industrial sectors, different sizes around the world into implementing not only the Lean Six Sigma philosophies, but also the tools and, uh, and the best strategies on the future, elements as, as a Lean Innovator, Value Engineering, Simulation, Lean Energy, Industry 4.0. Those are our core uh, motives to continue growing this uh, knowledge path, to continue bringing something new into the, into the continuous improvement tools. And this is a, uh, an interesting part of all that package. If we're gonna get into, into a continuous improvement system, if we wanna get into a new project, if we are interested into, into build a way of work, not necessarily implementing Lean Six Sigma, but I wanna make sure my team, my company can feel, uh, can feel my way of work and they can uh, use the same lingo. They can go and start using on a common ground, being on the same page, a specific tools, a specific methodologies to help all the departments to get connected, to help the company to get on the same page in regards of the mission and goals for the company. This is going to be a fundamental piece on the, on the system. How to get together, how to develop, how to define, and more and most important, how to cascade my strategy into the different departments through the different levels on the organization. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome to this. Uh, welcome to this webinar, and let me drive you through the through the objectives. Okay, on today's on today's chat. Uh, first of all, we want to understand what is lean strategy. What are going to be what are going to be the key elements, and how can I start using those elements today? I'll be interested to start working in some simple tools uh, this evening or tomorrow morning. So what are those key elements that I can start using right now? Those are going to be the Canvas business model and the hosting planning. So today we're going to be getting into those couple of, of interesting and efficient tools. And then we're going to get into, if those are the key elements, how should I go into an implementation process? What is going to be required? What are going to be what are going to be the steps if I want to be successful in, in uh, towards the implementation? How should I be doing this? So we're going to be walking you through the implementation process. That's something we're going to be covering, and also we're going to talk about how to start. How, what are going to be the first steps for you to get into into the lean strategy? And the agenda is uh, pretty simple. We're going to start with a background for uh, the next five minutes. Why is this important? And, and relevant on, on what we're going to be what they're going to be talking about, how this is going to be connecting to the system. Then we're going to get into the into the uh, two key elements, uh, Canvas, and we're going to spend 20 minutes over there and hosting plan, uh, planning and <clears throat> extra 20 minutes to talk about those a uh, couple of tools. At the end of the session, we're going to have a, a Q and A. 
uh, a Q&A uh, session. Uh, this is going to be really important to me. I, I, I'll be interested in to hear from you. Uh, uh, what are your expectations on on implementing these tools on your company? What are your main uh, your main concerns? I believe that is going to be valuable for uh, the audience, and that is going to be adding adding value also to the time we're investing on today's webinar. So, once again, welcome back, and let's start this webinar. Remember, it is not the big who is the small. It's the fast who is the slow. And in regards of this uh, um, statement from Jason Jennings in, 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 in his uh, bestseller book, we need to be quick to react. We need to understand the, the new technology, the new customer require, uh, requirements, the new competitor advantages. If we can understand this as soon as possible, and more important, if we can get aligned into a vision and a strategy on how to react on all this, on all these environment elements, we're gonna be we're gonna be getting behind. We're gonna be the slow uh, competitor. We're gonna be not meeting the customer requirements. So this is why we want to get into into lean strategy, right? As a background, let me share some uh, data from the Harvard Business School, and they were also curious about. How the, how the big companies, and, and, and not only the big companies, let me rephrase that, how companies at different levels, different sizes around the world, in different industries, were working with their teams, how they uh, were setting up their visions, how they were setting up the, their plans. And they, and they discovered that only between 10 and 20% of the companies in the world are following a specific uh, working frame for a strategic plan. I mean, everybody. Everybody's gonna get their vision. Everybody's gonna get their mission, right? They know the the, the top management. They know on their heads where we're we going, and and they're gonna be pushing to uh, lead us into into those directions. But only ten to twenty percent of the companies are using a specific working frame to get into a strategic planning. So only only ten or twenty companies into into a hundred into a hundred sample right that is pretty small but that doesn't end over there out of that percentage out of that percentage only between 10 and 20 percent of of, of, of of those individuals in the sample were executing their strategic plan correctly after the after the study right from from Harvard Business School, they were saying, "Yeah, I started and I follow a specific working frame, and I was successful on the execution. Only between ten and twenty percent of that sample. That means ten to twenty companies are following a working frame, and out of those ten to twenty companies, only between one and four, one and four companies, only one to four, to one to four companies out of a hundred are going to feel successful in regards of, of, of how they were implementing their strategies. How do we want to be successful? How do we want to be the first uh, uh, a touch point, the first contact point to our customers? How do we want to let, how do we want to get our competitors behind us? If only one to four companies out of a hundred feel they were successful on their strategies implementation. But you know what? And this is really interesting. 91% of the executives being part of this survey qualify themselves as exceptional decision makers. Can you explain me how that works? If only one to four companies out of 100 if were feeling successful in their strategies, how can you be qualifying yourself as an exceptional decision maker? If you're not able to set up your team, the different departments and, 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 and the links between how we're going to be working together to guide them into the same direction. How is this working? So this is why it's important to get us into a business development model. And now that I'm going to be talking about hosting planning and the lean strategies, let me tell you that this is going to be part of your way of work within your team, within your department or at your company. You need a way of work. 
every time you're going to have someone new on your team, you're going to, you're going to uh, need to communicate how you're working and what, what is the style, what are the core values that you are following? And I'm not talking just about general core values. I'm talking about the lingo, the methodologies, the working style that you want your team to follow. And in that business model, you're going to have two, two main cycles over there. The adaptation cycles, and this is going to be the ability. These are going to be the skills your team are going to have to adapt into the day-by-day -day situations. If they're performing on a specific level and they receive a hit on their, on their uh, performance, they need to understand the problem-solving tools, the visual management tools, the time management tools on how to adapt into the day-by-day -day so we can have a sustainable process. But you also are going to need an improvement cycle, which is, it is perfect and it, 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 and, and it is going to be great to be sustained, to be uh, uh, sustained on specific uh, levels, to be reliable. But probably we're not at, at our goals yet, and we want to get into the next step. So this is what's going to be required. And on the improvement cycles on the left, we're going to be talking about uh, value stream mapping and the Kaizen events, every, all what is going to be required for, for your team to get into the next level. So that is how a continuous uh, improvement system works. That is how a way of work in any company should be, should be working, having adaptation cycles and improvement cycles. But you know what? Most of the time, we forget about the system and process design. If we don't have a specific goal, if we don't have a specific alignment into where are we going, why, why are we here, what are going to be the main strategies this year to get us into our goals, if we don't have that, that portion, the adaptation cycles and the improvement cycles are not going to be sustaining. And that is why after a couple of months, after a year, trying to get into a way of work, trying to get into a, a specific methodology or continuous improvement system, that system just falls apart because we don't have the element portion over there on how to join all those different departments and strategies together. And that is where we're going to be using these strategic tools. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of them, the Canvas and the Hoshin planning. So that is my, my background. But before getting into, into how this works, let me tell you, in order to have a successful execution and how we're going to be cascading this strategy, we need to make this simple. We need to make this simple. A complex organization, a complex industry, complex uh, customers, right? Working under a complex methodology is going to be a burn. We need to use simple methodologies to understand where we're going, and we need to make this simple. So what we're doing with the, with the Lean Strategy is starting from a business model and understanding what are going to be the connections on my business perspective over there, really simple, in, in a one-pager. Then, with that idea, we're going to be able to get into a strategy that is what... Uh, we, 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 where we want to go. Now, let's understand how we're going to get there. And then let's build the sustainability package on how to, how to measure the performance on our strategies. And that is going to be cascading down into a KPI system and an execution plan with the, with the, with the purpose of being flexible and the main idea of providing a sense of of uh, a partnership, a sense of belonging into, this is how I'm contributing to the company. So we need to make it simple and let's try to understand how that's gonna be working. Uh, from the campus perspective and from the Lean strategy, have you been here uh, talking about an, a, specific, an, a specific topic, a typical conversation when we declare the world is changing and we need to adapt and we need to follow new strategies and, and person one start talking about services, person two start talking about emergency market, person three start talking about technology and after a couple of hours we are all just blah 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 and this is going to be the motivating for the team because they're investing energy, they're investing time, and they don't get your idea. They don't get where are you going. So what is a business model canvas? And let's start here. A business model canvas is going to be a template. 
And this template is going to be working as a canvas, as a blank canvas. As a blank canvas works for an artist to get all their ideas, all the, all the pieces that they have on their, on their imagination, they have feelings they want to express, they have ideas they want to express, and they want to, to scream that to the world. And they're using this piece of canvas to express their talent. That's exactly what you need. You need a specific template. You need a specific temp, uh, canvas, right? To get your ideas over there, to get your vision over there. So you can express that to your team. And they can now have a tangible perspective of where you're trying to go and how the business is supposed to be working. So what is a business model canvas? It's a template that will be used to describe, test, and implement your business model. And the beauty on this is that we're going to be able to set up this information in a one pager. That is the idea. And this is how the business model canvas looks like. If you notice over there, OK, we have uh, 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 nine different elements, nine elements that are going to be part of of your business plan. If you have an idea, and not necessarily a business idea, uh, 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 as an example, uh, 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 I, I, I start uh, 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 co-writing a book uh, last year, right? And the first thing we do, because we have different authors over there, different ideas, uh, uh, different trends on where to pull, uh, uh, where should be going into, into, into uh, creating this, this uh, a, a specific book. The idea over there was to start with a business model canvas. What is the value proposition we're going to get into this book? Who is going to be the customer? Who are going to be reading this book? Who's going to be reaching for this information? What are going to be the distribution channels to get connected to our customers? How we're going to be uh, getting the, 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 the customers engaged to our information, to our philosophy? Right, and how it's going to be working, how the revenue uh, stream is going to be working. That is also important. And now to make this happen, what are going to be the key activities? What are going to be the key resources we need to look into to, to make this uh, uh, to make this happen? And now let's be humble and recognize we're going to need partners. So who are going to be those partners, and how my cost structure is going to be working to make this happen? nine elements over there to make sure you have a tangible idea. And now you can go uh, uh, to the bank and ask for a bank loan. Now you can go to the investors. Now you can go with your boss. Now you can go with your team and let them know, this is my plan. This is how my idea looks like. This is how my vision looks like. This is what I want you to commit to. This is where I want you to follow me. Now you have something tangible to start talking to your people something in common to start linking the different, depart the, the, the different departments on your organization to, to, to let them meet into a specific, into, into specific common ground. And you know what? The beauty on this is it, it, it works exactly as, as, as the human brain, right? Uh, one hemisphere on the brain, one side of your brain is gonna be trying to get into the intangible artistic right? Uh, 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 elements over there. This is how, uh, uh, as an example, we're going to be getting into the front stage. But in order to get into, into the emotions, in order to get into this, uh, uh, why, why am I doing this, into this engagement, emotion, feelings, uh, uh, intangible elements, the front stage over there, right, as, as, your, as your left uh, uh, hemisphere works on the, on the brain, you also need the right side, the logic part, the tangible elements, the reason elements over there. So this is going to feel natural. Even if this is a template with, with looks like a puzzle and, and, and feels like we're assembling a puzzle, this is going to feel this is going to feel natural for you and your team because it's basically how the a natural human behavior works. We need to make sure we have those two elements, the emotional part and the rational part. If you can combine that and express that to your people, to your company, to your guys, that is going to be a game changer. So that is a, 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 an interesting approach on how we're using the, the business model canvas, right? And as I was saying, those nine elements over there are going to be 
Number one, as we were saying, your customer segment for whom you are creating value. And this may be working, as I was saying, on a business model, on a business idea, but this may be also a scoped for something specific. Hey, I have a, a, a project that I need to sell to my boss. Use a business model canvas and start defining who is gonna be, who is gonna be receiving the benefits on the organization, right? Number two, what is gonna be the value proposition? What are, are you gonna be delivering to the customers? Number three, what are going to be the communication and distribution channels? How will we make the customer receiving our value proposition? We need to understand those channels. And we need to understand if those uh, uh, channels are currently existing, or we need to also invest time, resources, and probably budget into building those channels. And most important, most important, how we're going to keep the customer tied to the value offer. Think about that. We don't want this to be just a couple of months uh, effort where a customer is going to be engaged and after a couple of months, they forget about it, right? And I'm talking about your customer, not only as your final customer, also as your internal customer, right? The different departments that, that, that are receiving the value proposition from, from your team. How are you going to be keeping your internal or external customers tied to your value offer? That needs to be declared. And most important, also, what is going to be your revenue stream? What kind of profits are we going to be, are we going to be supporting to the, to the company? Right? What is going to be the economic consequence? Right? What is going to be the tangible benefits we're going to be receiving while getting into this value proposition? Now let's get to the to the left side right on the on the business template uh, this is where we're gonna get into the logic into the reason okay <clears throat> on the brain those hemispheres are uh, 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 looking at us in a mirror but on a template the left side right is gonna be the logic is gonna be the reason so first key resources what are the key assets these are things that you need to grab that you need to that you need to get to uh, uh, onto your value proposition. You don't need to work those, you don't need to develop those, but you need to get into those assets. What are gonna be those existing assets that you need to have on your business model to make this idea work? And then let's get into the key activities. Now, these are gonna be the activities that you need to develop. You need to work this out to carry out and produce the value proposition. And as I was saying, also, this is an opportunity to be humble and to understand who are going to be my key partners, suppliers, partners that you will make my business model work. You can do this by yourself. You need to understand those relationships. And also, how is that going to be adding value to your model? And now if we're going to be getting into different departments, if we're going to be getting into different companies, if we're going to be getting into different vendors, if you're going to have a key partner, everybody at the company, everybody in your team needs to understand how strategic is going to be that alliance from the value proposition perspective. So it's now starting making sense, right? And get into reality. What's going to be your cost structure? How much is this going to cost? What's going to be the budget required to offer a value proposition and to get into and to get you into a revenue stream? So this is a beauty, and this is some of the of the lean tools that I uh, personally love to use. Every time I'm going to get into a new project, into a new idea, uh, uh, not only not only for my customers but also for my team, I try to show them how my idea looks like. And it's so important because if I tell you right now, hey guys, can you think on a red car? Can you think on a red car? Every one of you, each of you are going to be thinking on a different model, on a different size, on a different tone of red. If you own a red car, your experience is going to be providing some bias over there and you are immediately going to be thinking about your red car. Exactly the same is going to happen when you have a new idea and when you start talking about new technology and when you start talking about new value propositions and when you start talking about new products, people is going to be going into, into different corners on their brain because 
as human beings, we're so unique, we're so special. Uh, we have this capacity to, to get with our imagination and get into different areas, which is beautiful. But you know what? It's gonna be hard to get us into the same page. So get into this idea and make it tangible. You can get your template, your business canvas template over there. It has a limited resource uh, over there. If you notice, this is a one pager. Jorge, are we really gonna be able to set up my idea in only one page? That is, the, that is also part of the benefits. You need to think on your key elements, on your key resources, because this is what you're gonna be using to explain the idea to your team, to your customers, to the investors. This needs to be simple, but it is gonna be so powerful because you have those nine elements over there. And this is following the human uh, uh, nature to combine emotions and reason, right? To inspire people and to make sure they understand where you're trying to go. And now we have something tangible. We can print this out. We can rip it off if we don't like it and trash it out, but it's tangible now. It's tangible, right? So you need to start, if you're going to be getting into strategic planning, you need to start getting into, 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 your, into your canvas, right? And combining, as I was saying, those emotional and logic elements over there as how your brain works, okay? Why do we want to use this? I believe we, we pretty much uh, talk about all those, all those elements, right? Uh, we want to create a common and shared language, put the ideas over the table, make this tangible. As an example, Google, Larry Page and Sergey and Sergey Brin. Imagine, imagine Google, the, the Google team back in 1987, trying to explain the world. They were going to commit to organize the information in the universe in one specific site. What are you talking about, right? Imagine them back in 1987. So. This is from an academic per, uh, perspective, right? But what is the value? Of, who are the customers over there? Well, they have internet users. They have a free search engine. So this free search, getting into organizing the information of the world is gonna be provided through an, a specific web, website, uh, google.com. And the relationships over there are gonna be automated, okay? Now, the revenue stream over there is gonna be, is gonna be free. Right, we're not making business on, on, on providing this free search engine to our internet users. Uh, in order to uh, uh, build this, we need a search algorithm, uh, algorithm developers and apps, and we need to work into the research and design and data management. Key partners are gonna be the distribution partners, and we need a cost structure for IT, sales and marketing, R&D, and data operations. But now, where is the value? Uh, where is the revenue stream over there? Well. We have a second player over there. We have a second customer segment, advertisers and marketeers. Guess what's the value proposition for advertisers and, market, and, and marketeers? An audience. We have probably the, the biggest audience in the world, the biggest audience ever known. It's in google.com. Tell me if that is not a value proposition. How we're going to be connecting to advertisers and marketers through AdWords. You can pay for AdWords and we're going to be uh, uh, posting uh, 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 a specific advertiser, uh, 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 advertising uh, exercise through our website, right? And, 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 and how we're going to be collecting the, the revenue stream over there is going to be dollars per click. As simple as that, right? And I mean, this is an academic exercise, right? Uh, this is just uh, an academic exercise to provide a, a simple idea on how this works, right? But this is how the, the business canvas is supposed to work. I mean, uh, forget about the academic experience and now start thinking about how you can make this real, right? How can you start working into this business model canvas? And this is part of the, of the tools that we uh, teach uh, uh, individuals getting into the into the yellow belt, green belt, and black belt certifications. They're going to be experts on how to use the business canvas model. They're going to be getting into uh, real examples. Uh, they're going to be getting into into real information uh, and also building their own uh, business model canvas. Uh, being coached by a by a by a Lean Six Sigma by a Lean Six Sigma consultant over there. So that is part of what we do, right? But now you have your business model canvas. You have, uh, you have your business idea over there. You're able now to transmit your idea. And this is tangible. You can print this out and start talking about your idea. Perfect. 
how we're going to make this happen, how we're going to be getting into the road to start working into the execution and how we're going to be making sure they, we're going to be successful on the execution. We need a, we need a framework. We need a framework and there's, there's going to be different frameworks over there. If you go through websites, if you, to, if you go to a specific literature, you're going to hear about Cascade, you're going to uh, hear about Ho Chi Canary, you're going to uh, be uh, uh, hearing about uh, business model distributions, you're going to be hearing about different tools over there, okay? We promote the usage of the Ho Chi planning because we believe it's an effective uh, uh, strategy uh, working frame. Let me, let me tell you how this works and, and don't get me wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, if you have your business idea, use any work frame, but make sure, make sure you're gonna be using a specific working frame to declare what are gonna be your strategies and declare how you're gonna be making that business plan real, okay? Today, let's talk about the hosting planning. So the idea over there is to make sure if we have a, a, a business model canvas, now to understand what are gonna be the guidelines on the company. What are gonna be the reasons for the business to exist? And I'm, and I'm talking about the mission, vision, yeah, definitely. But from a business perspective, what are gonna be the guidelines? Think about this as, 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 as within your own person. At the end of the year, right? If you, do, if you go through this exercise, uh, you're trying to reflect about your own uh, behavior and, and your performance on the year, right? And at the end of the year, you're going to be uh, finding yourself thinking about, okay, in regards of my family, in regards of my professional career, in regards of my hobbies, in regards of my health, how I did last uh, 2020, right? Those are your guidelines. Let me now ask you, what are the guidelines for your company? We all know we want to make money, definitely, but what are the guidelines? We all know we have a vision. Okay, but what are your guidelines? If you don't have your guidelines, you don't have a, a, a purpose on how to align to the organization. And now that you have your guidelines, now you need to talk about, okay, if that, those are your guidelines, this is what you want to do, then how are you going to be doing that? What are going to be your strategies? My guideline is to be, my guideline is to be a healthy person right? How am I going to be doing that? There's a thousand ways to become more healthier. What are going to be my strategies? Understanding my budget, my restrictions, my time limitations, my discipline level. What is going to be the best strategy for me? We need to declare that. And now that is going to be transformed into a specific projects. If your strategy is going to be not based into exercise because I'm not that disciplined, but it's going to be based into a balanced uh, 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 nutrition. Well, let's get into a specific projects. Let's get into healthy recipes. Let's get into a specific project to uh, drink more water, right? Uh, 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 to avoid uh, um, uh, junk food over there, right? So what are going to be your specific projects? And now making sure we have a specific execution uh, uh, system right, a way to uh, measure our performance. So that is, that is how a whole shinkanri uh, works. And, and we're gonna check on the template in a, in a couple of minutes, bear with me, okay? But uh, how do I know I need a whole shin planning? Because you're gonna notice there's no connection between a strategy and continuous improvement. Uh, this is the, the engineering project, the sales project, the marketing project, the quality initiative, and these are just small efforts and small projects, but doesn't seem to connect to what we're doing. Too many projects in process. We are all over the table trying to do projects. And plans from one year to the next year never seems to connect, never seems to connect. And now we're waiting until what is gonna be the new idea for 2022 on the company, right? So those are the symptoms of companies in need to a hosting can we planning. How we're gonna be doing this, right? And before getting into that, uh, hosting can we, it's kind of a, a weird word over there, but it's, a, but it's fun talking into different terms. And it is part of why I, I, I got engaged and passionate about the methodology. I, I feel comfortable uh, learning about new vocabulary. I learn about new tools. So hosting can we, it's a Japanese term. Uh, um, from Toyota who, who, who started this, this philosophy, right? Uh, Hoshin 
uh, it's coming from direction and needle as the direction of the needle on a compass. Canary is coming from two uh, 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 vocables over there, which means control and reason or logic, uh, talking about administration, talking about control. So Hoshin planning means management and control into a specific direction, into a specific focus. So how we're gonna be keeping us into the same direction. And this is a template. This is a template. Once again, a one pager, okay? What is gonna be your philosophy, your mission, your values, your vision? And this is gonna be easy to go through because now you have your business model canvas and you can explain the idea to your, to your team members on, on what you're trying to build. So mission, values, and vision are gonna be feeling more connective within each other. Now, let's talk about your guidelines, as I was saying. And those are gonna be on the red section on your template. Then let's get into the blue section, your strategies. How you're going to be getting to those guidelines. And then let's talk about projects, how you're going to be executing those ideas. And all this information is going to be aligned. This project is going to be aligned to this strategy, which is also aligned to this specific guideline on the company. We know why we're doing what we do. And when you talk to, when you can talk to a person from the why perspective, you're talking to that part of the, of the brain who is not only following orders, but who is also willing to commit, who is also willing to understand why we're doing this. And that, my friends, is a game changer. If you want to get more successful on how to implement your strategies, you need to start talking to that portion, uh, to that part of the brain. Uh, you need to start talking to the, to the emotional part of the, of the brain who needs to understand why we're doing this, what is the alignment process. We, are, we can all perform different activities and different projects on the, on the company. Uh, this is what I, what, what I get paid for, right? But if you can talk to that portion of the brain, you're going to be working with people who is going to be engaged in, in, in following you. It's working shoulder to shoulder, sweating with you, bleeding with you. Total, total, total game changer. So let's get into this, okay? So this is the process. First, we need to get into the philosophy, okay? And as I was saying, getting into the philosophy it should be just a reflection on what are we trying to do? Right? We want to be the most successful and respected company in America. Uh, be, mission, we want to attract and attain customers with high valuable products and services. Values, no matter what, in order to get to this vision, in order to, to, to be who we are in our mission, we're always going to be honest, respectful, generous, and kindness. No matter what, we're, gonna be, we're not going to be able to break those values to get into our goals. So now you get your philosophy. And people understand why we're getting into this. Now, let's talk about uh, the guidelines. So you're going to have four specific guidelines to follow on a company. <clears throat> Financial, commercial, operations, and people. Those four. If you want to ask, if, if you want to have investments or regulations, that's totally okay. But as in your own personal life, as I told you, my guidelines, my family, my work, or my professional career, not necessarily my work, my professional uh, uh, being, right? My health and my hobbies. Those are my guidelines. I'm not talking about 100 guidelines, even if, uh, if, uh, if uh, uh, human life can be so complex. Four guidelines over there is what you need to get the company aligned. And those are going to be related. In order to be there for my family, I need to be healthy. I need to be healthy so I can also work and provide to my family. But I also need to balance my work with my hobbies to be, to be balanced and to have time and to have a, a healthy mind to also spend time with my family. So I need to balance all those. The same here. Your financial guideline is going to be connected with your commercial guideline, with your people guideline, with your operations guideline. But what are going to be those? right? In this example, we only have three over there, right? But we want to increase sales as financial, right? Uh, we want to we wanna, uh, 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 become a world-class company. This may be in operations. And I want to make human re, uh, the human resources a competitive advantage. Those are my guidelines. A specific, short, concrete. This is what we want to do. Now, guess what? 
let's get into indicators for those guidelines. I like to call this the vital signs, as in the human body. Uh, guys, do you know that the human body has over a thousand ways, over a thousand ways to tell you if you're healthy or unhealthy? The pigmentation on your skin, the planks on your eyes, how greasy is your is your hair? Is your hair right? You have a thousand ways to tell you if you're healthy or unhealthy, but there are only six vital signs for the human body: breathe rhythm, temperature, heart rate, pulse. Are some of those six uh, 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 vital signs? Let me ask you this. What are your company's vital signs? Those no more than 10 indicators that will help us to understand if your business is healthy or unhealthy. I know that you can measure thousands of indicators. What are your thousand, what are your vital signs? No over 10. And guess what? Those vital signs are gonna be related to your guidelines. How I'm gonna be measuring the increasing of sales? Well, through a percentage on uh, domestic and percentage of international sales. How am I gonna be measuring uh, 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 my company became in a world-class uh, company? How am I gonna be measuring uh, 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 the human resources advantage? And now that you understand how to measure those specific guidelines, now you have your vital signs and you're gonna be able to follow up on those uh, healthy indicators. And those are gonna be your month-to-month follow-up uh, uh, indicators. Now, let's get into uh, strategies, the blue portion, how we're gonna be doing that. If we wanna increase sales, there's a thousand ways to increase sales. How we're gonna be doing that? Well, we're gonna, need, we're gonna focus into a specific market niches. We're gonna, we're gonna launch one new product to get into this market. Right, and we want to increase the value proposition. Those are going to be my strategies. I'm not. I'm not going to go crazy. I need to understand my limitations, my budget, my time limitations, my resources, so my strategies can be also making sense. So that is how you're going to be getting into your guidelines by defining your strategies. Also, to become a world class company, what are going to be your strategies? We can we can go crazy and define a thousand. We're going to only follow three, right? ISO, Lean Six Sigma. We're going to be going with a, 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 an improvement on our supply chain. Those three strategies. Perfect. Now. Let me know your indicators for those strategies. And that is how you're gonna be getting from vital signs, which these are gonna be followed by the top management every month to a specific operational indicators that are supposed to be following weekly by the execution team, by the different departments. And now not only your strategies, but also your KPIs, your key process indicators are gonna be making sense, are gonna be aligned with a specific strategies, with a specific vital signs, with a specific guidelines. And now let me know how we're gonna be doing that, right? Oops, I'm sorry. Now let me know how we're gonna be doing that, the specific activities, and those are gonna be your projects. In order to get into, into the implementation for the Lean Six Sigma, what are gonna be the projects? In order to establish an, 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 uh, 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 a suggestion program, a talent development program to make sure uh, HR is gonna be a competitive advantage, what are gonna be the projects over there? And those are also gonna be aligned. Now, if we execute these projects, those are gonna be hitting these indicators, making sure we are getting into these strategies or succeeding into these strategies, hitting our vital signs, hitting our business and getting us uh, 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 a purpose sense, a commitment sense. Now we are a team. Now we're working together. Now we're something more that people just sharing a physical space, working from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are something more. We're building something. We are into this together and we know where we're going. And now you have the ability to also follow up and you have the ability now to cascade. Now you have the ability to cascade a KPI system. And out of the guidelines, 
The top management can follow a, a balance scorecard based on the vital signs. And the departments can follow on a specific weekly indicator box score. And you can cascade down up to the day-by-day -day floor or day-by-day -day administrative departments getting into a day-by-the-hour or day-by-day -day board. And now everything is going to be connected. This is how you successfully cascade through your organization. On our yellow and green belts uh, uh, programs, we also show our uh, uh, attendees how to work into a specific techniques to report into indicators because we don't want this to become now a, 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 a meeting, a meeting driver, a, a meeting driving company. Uh, uh, we're always in meetings. We are 80% uh, uh, of on our days on meetings. That is not necessary. That is not necessary. We're also going to be talking about uh, talking about a specific uh, methodologies as the four quadrants. If you're going to be reporting to indicators, how people need to first explain the trend or behavior, then talk about the problem, then talk about the root cause. So what they're doing specifically to get into the day by day. So this is not going to be about projects and executions. And now the next month when we start the day by day, all this is going to be forgotten. No, we also need to work into the day by day and how we're going to be gaining time, how we're going to be gaining the resources to get into the executions. That is going to be combined. That is not extra work. That is part of the way of work on our company, right? So that is how this is going to be getting through an, through an integration. And this is what I what I had to, to share with you guys. I'm, I'm sorry, I... I I go over two two minutes over there. My plan was to finalize at the uh, forty five minutes. Now we're under the forty seven minutes. But really quickly, guys, there's always going to be resistance to change. Twenty percent of the people is going to be having a positive attitude. It's going to be supporting you. Twenty percent of the people is going to be negative about the implementation, about the changes, new technology, new boss, new products. They're going to be negative about that. Guys, you need to work on the 60% of the people who is gonna be trying to be neutral, waiting to see what's gonna happen. And guess what? If things start going on the wrong direction, they're gonna zoom to the negative people. So this is why you need a strategic plan. This is why you need to declare your strategies. You need to declare your projects. You need to declare your KPIs and your vital signs because you don't wanna lose that 60% of the neutral people. They need a vision. They need a plan. They need a, a contribution self. They need motivation. And that is how you are going to be making them going through the positive attitude into uh, towards the, the, the implementations, toward the change, right? And before getting into the Q and, 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 and A's, uh, uh, the, the questions and answers uh, uh, um, uh, exercise, please, uh, if you're interested into getting uh, beyond these uh, uh, training methodologies. If you are interested in to understand how this works, how to build a Lean Six Sigma program, how this is going to be part of connecting something bigger, uh, feel free to explore our um, training contents, our training options. On the chat, I'm sharing with you guys a link to a special offer we have. Um, which you can get a 10% discount with the Nexel code, the LSI COVID-19, uh, uh, 2021. Uh, in that link, you can find the information in regards of, of our certification roadmap, getting into yellow belt, getting into green belt, getting into black belt. I don't want to uh, transform this into a, into a sales app. So I will just going to be sharing the link information over there for you to explore the options. And if you have any question, if, if you're curious about, hey, Jorge, do you have templates? Uh, do you know how, how can we start getting in, in, implementing all this? I have these restrictions. I have these uh, uh, opportunities. Let me also type my email on the chat. And I'll be glad to uh, share information with you, uh, get in touch. Uh, get connected. Let's grow the Lean Six Sigma community over there. This is why we're here. This is why we're passionate. Uh, 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 this is what we're passionate about. So please feel free to reach out and to and to continue growing the Lean Six Sigma community. Okay. So um, thank you, everyone. This is what I wanted to to share with you guys. Um, and, and please feel free to uh, now. Let's start with the with the Q and and, and A's. Uh, 
uh, Kari, uh, uh, Clara, I'm not sure if I missed a question in the chat. I was I was aware of the chat, but I believe I didn't miss anything. Just to make sure if you if you uh, have uh, detected someone trying to get into a question. If not, uh, Janos, uh, Lalo, uh, Christian, Stephanie, uh, uh, Diomedes, Alejandro, uh, Mireya, Jose, if you have any question, if you have any comment, please feel free to bring it on, right? And, and this is uh, where we can also add a lot of, 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 of tons of value over there. Well, we don't have any question in the chat. I don't know if uh, some of you have to open the microphone or you have to write just to read the, the question. Exactly, feel free to open your mic or feel free to let us know by chat if you want us to open your mic and if you wanna add a comment or add a, add a question. Thank you, Mireya, thank you. Um, I'm glad that you enjoy that. I'm glad that you enjoy the, the, the webinar. Thank you, Mireya. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, uh, Kari and Clara looks like we don't have uh, questions questions over there. But once again, uh, do you have my do you have my email over there? Do you have the link to the webinar uh, to our uh, certifications levels over there as well? Feel free to reach up. The, don't feel compromised to get into any cell. We do this because we love what we do. We're passionate about what we do. So feel free to uh, connect to us. Uh, if you need templates, information, uh, you have questions about how to how to implement your own system, feel free to reach. Uh, thank you, Alejandro, uh, for your comments on thank the chat. Stay, you. stay safe. It's Hello, Jorge. Easy. How are you? Hey, good I'm afternoon. good. Jorge. Good afternoon. Jorge, um, are you going to send all this information, or you know, are we going to have it in the active campaign or something. Um, I mean, for those that are related to the LSSI, uh, it's important for me, for example, um, because we are connected to some uh, English Caribbean countries. So they speak English. So that's important also to share this information with them. So uh, for me, it would be important to have this Definitely, Diomedes, definitely. As part of our uh, contribution to the Lean Six Sigma community, we're always committed to, to post the webinars on the YouTube channel, to post it as well on the on the on on our own platform, uh, the Lean Six Sigma platform. So away from news from, from our end, Diomedes, and we'll be happy to share this information not only with the LSSI team, but with the Lean Six Sigma community to the world, uh, to the world Lean Six Sigma community as well, right? Okay, right. thank and you I so just much. wanted to add, uh, George, that uh, we will send the recording to all the participants. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Well, have a nice day or nice evening, depending on, on your side, from Europe or from America. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Clara. Everyone, stay safe, stay connected. Wow. Thanks for your yes. time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.